Don Peebles, a close friend, certainly of Barack Obama. In fact, they went golfing together. His big finance, big money raised Barack Obama. Uh, had his, uh, I, I would say, Don, your doubts about Hillary Clinton, certainly the leftward lurch of the Democratic Party. Uh, Hillary Clinton seems to have solidified her position tonight with multiple wins. She's picked up at least eight states of the 11 that were up for grabs today. We don't know the delegate apportionment there. So she seems inevitable. Let's say it's Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Where does Don Peebles go? <laughs> well, that's an interesting place. Look, I think, by the way, you know, you mentioned Hillary Clinton. Think about some of the states she won uh, tonight with big margins. Uh, she's not going to win those states in the general election. She's never winning Alabama. She's never winning Texas. Um, if you look at, um, you know, these other states where they are in reach of the Democrats, you know, Bernie Sanders is much more competitive. <laughs> You, you know, so, um, but, she but look, I think it's her nomination to lose to hear it's always the party been that chiefs way to sell it. Oh, so, so do you think that her people have been saying here, you know, hey, we would love Donald Trump to be the guy we're facing. Are they just getting ahead of themselves? You know, there's an old saying, careful what you wish for, you may get it. Um, I do not think Trump is the best um, opponent for Hillary Clinton. I think Trump is going to be very difficult for her. I think you're mm. going to see Donald Trump evolve as we've been seeing him tonight. Um, and this is not the first time, for example, he's talked about Planned Parenthood. He did it in the debate last week. So what do you I think, think what's up with that, that he's positioning well, himself for a general election, right? Absolutely. I think he's now, he believes that he, <coughs> he's got the pathway to the nomination, and now he's gearing up for the general election. Hmm. Think about it. Someone gives a victory speech like Ted Cruz, and he's talking about his opponent, and he's talking and he's begging the other candidates to get out of the race so he has a better chance to maybe slow down his opponent. And then Marco Rubio has not won a primary yet and is attacking Donald Trump and saying, let's wait to Florida, where he is almost certain to lose there as well to Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. You know, Jeb Bush, I think, got out because he didn't want to have the humiliation of losing his own state. All right. Um you, you look at the, that scenario right now, and the math is still, you know, anyone's guess here, but Donald Trump's going to pick up a lot of delegates tonight. He's going to pick up at least half that were up for grabs, maybe more. How much is that? So if that is the case, if it's 300 or whatever, I mean, it's it, a lot. What do you make of just that? If he's inevitable and his tone tonight was to sort of be kinder to Ted Cruz, he had a couple of zingers, certainly for Marco Rubio. He had good things to say about Paul Ryan, but in his best Tony Soprano impression, reminded Paul Ryan it'd be nicer if we got along. <laughs> uh, what do you make of that? I, th I think it's an olive branch to, again, talk about how he's going to govern. Um, you know, someone said earlier on the program about negotiations. You got to think about where Donald Trump's world is. It's my world, the real estate development yeah, world. Yeah. Everything's up for negotiation, and, and some of the best negotiators make their ask so unreasonable so that the other side has so far to come to come over to their side. I think that's part of what Donald's doing.